This is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, and in this After Effects tutorial, we are lip-syncing cartoons, just like you see in this intro, but I'm sure yours will be drawn much, much better. Alright, so in After Effects, let's have a look at what we're driving at. So, in this composition, you can see we have an audio layer here that's laid down and we can use this to listen to it and then find what we need for coming up with some keyframes that will then alter the shape of the mouth that we're looking at. And if we go into this layer, you can see we have many things in this composition here. Each one is a different shape of the mouth and each one is labeled for sort of the sound that the mouth is making at that time. And all of these come from an Adobe Illustrator file where I had drawn all of these mouth shapes, put them on separate layers, and uh, separated them from the face. So, to start off, the first thing you need to do is acquire or draw or take pictures of all of the shapes of the mouth that you wish to use. So. Let me just uh, call up a pretty quick Google image search for lip sync mouth shapes. And then you're gonna find that there are many charts and diagrams of how people feel these should be represented. It's uh, pretty universal and I think these are the kind of things that you get, uh, you know, if you go to college for animation. But you can see that a lot of what the mouth is doing is pretty pre-prescribed, so the ah uh should always be uh, open like this, and uh, the o oh should always be kind of like ooh in that shape, and uh, that kind of thing. But you can see a lot of these have a lot to do with uh, the kind of uh, animal you're looking at. So this is a person, this is an anthropomorphic mouse, you know, this is someone made out of clay. So, you know, if you want to go and check out other people's work, I'd recommend you have a look. If you're not sure how to draw things, then uh, you can draw inspiration from there. But a lot of it is going to come down to applying these sort of constants about mouth shapes and how mouths create sound and uh, the other thing is going to be a lot down to your character design so when you're starting out you may want to start the technique by using maybe you know some images you pull from the internet as long as you cite them correctly and do not infringe on copyright you know all that good stuff and if you're just practicing by yourself then that's good too or I would actually recommend that you take photos of your own mouth and uh, use those as your reference point because as you make the sounds, you get an idea of what the shape should be. Anyway, that's enough about this. You need to first acquire, draw, produce mouth shapes and you will need to label them correctly. Like this one is for M and uh, you know, this one is for E and uh, this one is for ah. So make sure that you label them correctly in here. Once you have either picked up photos or done whatever to generate these things, then it's time to move on into After Effects for the heart of this technique, which is going to be, it's an old one. It's an oldie, but a goodie. It's actually reused from an old flash technique of bringing them in here, assigning them to different times or states, and then we'll remap that composition in time to uh, display these states when those sounds are happening. So let's, uh, in After Effects, go File, New, New Project, or just open it up. I'm going to not save whatever I was doing. So now I'm going to import those mouth shapes. So here we go, mouthshapes.ai. Good stuff. So let's import it by just dragging it in here. It's gonna ask you, import what? Import it as a composition, please. Keep the footage dimensions as the layer size, not the document size. If you wanna have it as the document size, it shouldn't make too much of a difference in this case, actually. So, because we're not gonna be moving those layers around, then if you leave it as document size, they will actually be brilliantly stuck where you left them. So, we're gonna go with actually document size on this one. That'll produce for you a composition. This one's called Mouth Shapes. And as you can see in here, we have 
you know, a bunch of mouth shapes in there. And like I was talking about with the document size, you can see this layer's size is like this, even though it's only this big. But this can be helpful if you have like uh, jaw shapes and stuff also sort of aligned on here. It helps you keep it all nice and organized and where it needs to be. So let's, uh, let's get started. So first thing I want to do is pre-compose all of the mouth parts. So just to pre-compose that, I hit uh, Command Shift C, you can Control Shift C if you're on a uh, Windows machine, I think, and then uh, you know we'll name this uh, mouth. Okay, great. Now we're going to go into the mouth. We are going to select everything, and let me just zoom in here so you can see what we're doing. I am going to hold down Alt. I'm going to hit the square bracket. Uh, on either side, so left and right square brackets, which will trim these, poke them all on with the eyeball here, so that's good. And selecting from the bottom to the top, I'm going to go animation, keyframe assistant, sequence the layers. No overlap, please. So each one is now on a separate frame. Excellent, they're all still selected. I'm gonna bump them out one, move that there, move this here, so that the first and last take up more than one frame. And that is because occasionally weird things can happen at the start and end when we start time remapping things. It doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes it happens that you will go on to the next step and you will see no mouth shape because you are actually here or it's making mistakes or you're here and it's looking at negative one frame or whatever. Odd things can happen. So we're going to avoid that by dragging these first two to be two frames long. Now at this stage, I would like you to take a paper and a pencil, a paper, a piece of paper, and then you will write down on there each of the frame numbers. So for example, frame one is most sounds, and then frame two is f or v, and then frame three is a, frame four is e, and so on, so that you know, you know, without having to go in here and look, what each of these uh, is. So just have that reference in front of you, and then we're good to move on. So move on here to mouth shapes. And uh, we have a mouth, we have something else, and uh, on this mouth, we are going to go layer, time, enable time remapping. Now we we'll just select that, right click I want you to toggle hold keyframe now a hold keyframe is something that doesn't animate between it so if you have one hold keyframe here at zero and then you have another keyframe here at say one uh, there is no animation between them this one could be nine it goes zero one nine so they're just clicking to each of those so uh, we now have the ability to keyframe what sounds are where. You look at your cheat sheet, it'll tell you, you know, shape number one, shape number five, shape number four, whatever is supposed to go on when you are hearing that sound. So you can see that if we uh, play this back, blah, 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 blah. It, uh, you know, looks a little bit like talking. Great. So, so now you need to bring in some audio. So. Let's uh, go here. We could use, uh, you know, the uh, lip syncing intro audio. Bring that in. Give it a go. Pull that down onto your timeline. Hit LL to bring up its waveform. And now we get to the fun part of every tutorial where I have to explain a little bit about audio. So, audio in After Effects by default is not playing when I scrub through it. If you want to hear the audio, you will hit the period or decimal point on your uh, on your number pad so that will you know after some clicking worrying and grinding should this is Evan Aber. there you go so it's going to produce some noise you can also hear it by holding down the control or command on a mac and scrubbing through and if you hold in place it's going to play a section ahead of you and you can use this to go through and find the spaces where each of these need to be. So you're going to go through, you're going to find that, mm, yeah, the TH sound, which is number three, should be happening at this stage. Three, and then the I 
uh, that sound should be here. Um, and then the s sound should be here. So what is the shape of that? And the reason why we have the cheat sheet is so you don't have to keep coming back in here. So, you know, do, 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 and so on. So you want to go through and you want to put all of those in. And in the end, you will have a whole whoop -dee of these keyframes moving along and syncing it up. Now, the amount of detail, the sort of fidelity that's going to be there is going to depend on sort of what system of mouth shapes you've chosen. So I have, I think, seven here, and the mouth can move in way more than seven ways. So I've had to overlap a bunch of them and sort of sacrifice the, uh, the fidelity and the trueness that this character will have. But on the other hand, he's also a very simple character, so you can get away with a lot doing that. But I'll show you a little trick that I also put on here to make it seem more complicated than it really is. I applied a turbulent displace to the mouth, all right? Now, why I did that is because for long sections where he's going like, ooh, or ah, I still want it to look like each frame is being redrawn. So I use the turbulent displace, and I mess around with the evolution options here uh, by giving it a new random seed, you know, every so often which is gonna cause this to jump around. So I'm going to alt click on the random seed here. And then I'm gonna type in first posterize time and then in brackets, the number 12, which means I'm going to be basically changing this expression to update as if it were on a project that had a frame rate of 12 frames per second instead of, I think we're on 24 frames per second. And then the next line is going to be random, and then brackets, and then multiply that by 100, all right? So that means that every so often, this is going to update. So updating sometimes. And then I just adjust these to be, uh, you know, a little bit more appropriate. But now, even if he's doing nothing, the shape is being redrawn randomly. So it seems like... It never repeats. Someone has redrawn this every time very wonderfully. So that's that's a little trick you can use to sort of get a little hand-drawn action in here, if you would like. I mean, this character design lends itself to looking lazy and crappy, so uh, it's good to fake it in that way. And you'll need to basically tweak these numbers to sort of get them where you want them, but this uh, random seed here is going to really propel that. So copy this and apply it to this as well, so everything's everything is getting the treatment. So you can see how that works quite simply. And if you check out, watch the intro a little bit more, you'll see there are a lot of uh, a lot of little mistakes in how the speaking works. But in general, if everything is moving, you have more movement in the scene, you're going to be able to get away with a lot more. But hopefully, this gives you a good primer for a technique for lip syncing in After Effects. This has been Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com. You should stop by Premium Beat for all of your music and sound effects needs. All cartoons need cartoonist sound effects, so definitely check that out. And if you want to learn more about uh, After Effects, other applications, then check out the blog on Premium Beat or check out uh, Premium Beat's channels on the Vimeo and YouTube and stuff like that. It's great stuff there. You should totally subscribe. It'll be rad. If you want to see more stuff that I do, uh, I'm Evan Abrams. Check out evanabrams.com, EC Abrams on YouTube, EC Abrams on Twitter. Uh, look me up in the authors section on Premium Beat, see more of my stuff. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, best of luck with your character lip syncing. Thanks again, and have a nice day.